point in time, I'd like to call this meeting of the Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders to order. Please rise for a moment of silence. I ask that you remember in your thoughts and prayers, Jean Settle, a longtime employee of the Housing and Community Development Department. Dennis, salute to the flag. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act, NJSA 10 colon 4 10, has been complied with and shall be entered into the minutes of this meeting. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Belante. Here. Freeholder Delina. Freeholder Polo. Here. Freeholder Rios? Here. Freeholder Tamaro? Here. Freeholder Valenti? Here. Freeholder Director Rafano? Here. Correspondence, Margaret? Each freeholder has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the clerk's office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on file in the office of the clerk of the board for reference. We need a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Now we need to deviate from the regular order of business to consider two resolutions regarding appointments. First resolution is 12-0315. Margaret? The title is Appoint Pardell Singh Johal as a member of the Planning Board to finish the unexpired term of Anthony Massaro commencing February 16, 2012 and terminating December 31st, 2012. At this point in time, I'd like to open to the public uh, resolution number 12-0315 only. Anyone from the public on that resolution? Move to close the public portion. Second. <laughs> Motion to close by Fielder Tamara, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. We need a motion to adopt resolution number 12 0315. So moved. Second. <laughs> motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded yeah. by Fielder Tamara. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valenti? Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano? Yes. Madam Clerk? Hardal Singh Johal. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. Allegiance to the same. And to the governments established. To the governments established. In the United States. In the United States. And in this state and in this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and that i will faithfully that i will faithfully impartially and justly impartially and justfully perform all the duties perform all the duties of the office of of the office of member of middlesex county planning board member of middlesex planning board according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me god thank you, thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I really thank all the freeholders, not mentioning the names and the positions for appointment on the planning board. And I am very, very, very confident that as I worked in quarterate with our Mayor Ryman for the nine last years in the chair, we accomplished a lot. I hope we will have the same continuity and a teamwork in the county. And this county is the greatest on the land, and I am really privileged. <laughs> I am privileged. You know, though it's a little start, but hopefully we'll move forward together and share the ideas, make this county the best out of the best. And thanks for all my colleagues and friends and my relatives. And again, once again, from the bottom of my heart, 
I have got appreciation and everything. God bless everybody and may God bless me the strength so I can work faithfully and impartially for the development of the county. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> the next resolution for consideration is resolution 12-0376. Margaret. Appoint Stanley Bagachiski of Dayton to replace the unexpired term of Frank Trinko on the Middlesex County Vocational School Board commencing February 17, 2012 and terminating October 31, 2012. At this point in time, I'd like to open to the public a resolution number 12-0376 only. Anyone from the public on that resolution only? Motion to close the public portion. Second. Motion by Phil Tamara. Seconded by Deputy Director Rios. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. I need a motion to adopt Resolution 12-0376. So moved. Second. A motion by Fielder Barrett Vellante. Second by Fielder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Vellante. Yes. Freeholder Polos. Yes. Freeholder Rios. Yes. Freeholder Tamaro. Yes. Freeholder Valente. Yes. Freeholder Director Rafano. Yes. Margaret. I, Stanley Bagachinsky, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, that I will bear true faith, that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established, in the United States, in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform, all the duties of the office of, all the duties of the office of, member of the Board of Education of the Vocational Schools in Middlesex County, member of the <laughs> Board of Education of the Vocational Schools in Middlesex County, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Shears. That was a great speech. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's a little shorter, but I still have to write it. I would like to thank Freeholder Director Rafano, Freeholder Barrett Belanti from South Brunswick, Freeholder Tamaro, and the Board of Chosen Freeholders for this exciting opportunity. I consider being appointed to serve as a member of the board in honor, and I look forward to attending my first meeting next month. God bless Middlesex County, God bless New Jersey, and God bless America. A motion to resume the regular order of business? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, ayes have it. Uh, reports of freeholders. Freeholder Carol Barrett Belante. No report this evening. Freeholder H. James Polos. A few items, uh, Director. Uh, the other night there was a large fire in Highland Park at the Center School. The reason I mention it is, is that as a result of that, it, it grew to a three alarm fire. And as such, the fire marshal and the county fire marshal, I should say, was activated our offices uh, in order to bring in mutual aid to the community and to provide some additional assistance. It was my first um, on-scene participation as chairman of public safety, and I wanted to just highlight tonight the wonderful coordination efforts our county fire marshal's office does in these types of situations. There were, I believe, six fire departments and two first aid squads that were participating, uh, and to see our fire marshal, our team, and also the many volunteers who sometimes are overlooked who participate as members of our fire marshal's group, um, our police group, and so forth, all through the fire marshal's auspices, uh, all participated, and they're there really as a resource. And it was very interesting to see how well that resource is received by the local fire department uh, for train for um, technical assistance, for equipment, for coordination of efforts that go beyond the borders of Highland Park in that particular instance. And it happens throughout the county. Uh, and it's good to highlight from time to time, which I'll be doing during the course of the year when these situations occur, uh, so that there's a clear recognition of what the county's role is in these types of local situations uh, and how the local municipalities and the county work so well together in these types of emergencies. I also participated this past week on uh, Monday, the holiday, 
with uh, Warden Chicky on the swearing in of new corrections officers at our adult correction facility. Uh, Warden, was it 11 or 13 officers? What was the number? Pardon? 13 officers. Uh, we had an opportunity also to uh, visit with some of the officers and see some of the posts throughout the uh, facility. But uh, 13 very eager uh, and energetic officers who are looking forward to serve the county in Middlesex and be able to provide protection within that facility, which is not only protection within the facility, but protection beyond its walls as well. So we wish them the best of luck. We also, this past week, uh, had a wonderful program that was established by the prosecutor's office in Middlesex County. It, was, it came at the request of, the, of representatives from the Jewish Federation of Middlesex County. It really was modeled after a similar program that I believe took place in Bergen. And the point of it was to bring organizational leaders together from the Jewish community, from the synagogues and so forth throughout Middlesex County to talk about security. As many of you are aware, there have been a number, and unfortunately an increasing number of violent attacks that have occurred to Jewish citizens and Jewish organizations throughout the state. We've had a number of bias incidents that have occurred. We've had swastikas going up on buildings and public facilities. Uh, and there was some specific concern about what was occurring. Uh, also, the international threat that always occurs uh, in these types of situations. Prosecutor's Office, in cooperation with the local police departments, including, I believe, Edison, South River, um, Highland Park participated, East Brunswick, put together a wonderful program, brought together state agencies from Homeland Security and from the federal resources together to give a great picture of, of information uh, to the organizational leaders about what their resources were. Uh, I want to thank Joe Krizza, too, our public safety director, for his participation. But it was a very well attended program, uh, and I think the information was very well received by the participants. They, they did a, an absolutely wonderful job. Um, in addition, we also had a wonderful meeting this past week. Uh, we had our IT director and our people involved from our fire marshals department and from the communications in the county to talk about our communications network. We are going to be working feverishly this year to improve the quality of our communications links uh, and how they operate not only at the county level but how we're going to be able to better interact uh, and um, communicate with our municipalities, offering them new communication opportunities. <coughs> Uh, but it was a very fruitful meeting, and I believe that we're going to be charting out some, some new steps, if you will, that will hopefully bring even some, some improved service, not only to our county facilities, which is our primary goal, but also to our municipalities who may want to participate. Last but not least, we have a presentation tonight, and I'm going to ask Dave Greger if he could please come up to the microphone. Um, as many of you are aware, we've been participating in a program that's been funded in large part by the Department of Highway Traffic Safety for the last few years. Uh, for the last three years, we've really been focused on how to improve pedestrian and traffic safety in Middlesex County. This year, one of our endeavors through our initiative was to create a, a website, a one-stop shop, if you will, of traffic safety and road safety information for residents of the county and visitors to our county. Uh, it's a kind of a unique opportunity, and I won't steal Dave's thunder. I'll have him walk through and, and paint the picture a little bit better of what the website can provide to you. But what's important here is, is that this is an opportunity for residents to be able to access information, be able to register complaints, uh, and be able to channel their complaints to the appropriate authorities, be it at the local level or at the county level or at the state level for any type of road or traffic safety or pedestrian safety situation they encounter. Uh, again, this is something that's been funded by the Department of Highway Traffic Safety. I want to say at the onset, as I'm sure Dave will, and then we're going to ask uh, Bill Neary to come up in a few minutes and say a few words as well. This initiative could not have been possible without the great partnership of uh, KMM, Keep Middlesex Moving. Uh, it is truly a partnership to have created this website. I want to thank Bill and his group publicly for all their help uh, and efforts to make this a reality. Uh, it's an exciting opportunity. I can tell you that in the short time that we've had it, just a couple odd weeks that it's been running, we've had nearly 300 hits already, and we haven't even had the opportunity to promote it. Uh, but that will certainly be a key piece for us in 2012 is promoting this new uh, traffic safety opportunity. With that, I want to introduce Dave Greger, who is our transportation uh, program director. Um, but he has some great history, and I just want to take a minute to tell you that we try to find the best in Middlesex County to take on these new challenges. I had the pleasure of working with Dave many years ago when I was emergency management director in my town. He ran emergency management for the New Jersey State Police for 15 years. 
He was the traffic safety um, operations person for Central and North Jersey for the state police for a number of years and retired as a captain in special operations. So he has a lot of experience in traffic safety and law enforcement and we've channeled that into this program and it's been a great success as a result in part of his work and the efforts of all those who participate. We also want to recognize Carol Burns and Allie Whittle who are here today who have been providing some administrative assistance and program assistance on this as well. And with that, Dave, I'll turn it over to you. Actually, the freeholders stole most of my thunder. Nah. Uh, <laughs> it's good to be back home in Middlesex County. I began my state police career in the early 1980s. I won't tell you what year, but it's been a while. Uh, in the county, and uh, I began out of the Edison Station. So when I had the opportunity to come back and do some traffic safety work, I knew there was a plethora of great resources in this county that could do some good work, but I didn't realize to what extent. I really didn't. Um, when I assume the role, I've been the traffic safety coordinator for 11 months now. Uh, it's amazing to me the resources that we have between Robert Wood Johnson and some of the folks with injury, injury prevention there, Diana Starris, um, and immediately I befriended, or I should say, and I call him Mayor Neary, he'll always be mayor, I mean adjacent town in Monroe, um, befriended uh, the mayor, and the mayor has a tremendous resource in Keep Middlesex Moving, which he is the executive director of. <coughs> Um, the mayor sponsored uh, the development of the website. The website itself, in terms of the maintenance, in terms of the idea of the website, as well as our program, is sponsored by Highway Traffic Safety. But KAMM has sponsored the development of the website and has led all their technical uh, assistance to doing just that. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the freeholder because the vision of this website was to offer more than just education. And that's what our program's about. It's about the three E's of traffic safety, as we say. Um, education, enforcement, and enhancement. And if your mind can run wild in terms of those three and what it means to develop a comprehensive program, the enforcement piece is easy. I mean, we all know sometimes it just takes enforcement to have folks obey traffic laws. And with that comes a, a measured degree of safety. Then it's the education. Those are the folks that are borderline, and I count myself in that group, that need to be reminded of statistics and what it means not to wear your seatbelt and what it means to have maybe a drink too much. And I think this website, and we'll show you the traffic safety pages in a second, does a great job of blending that education with the enforcement alternatives that are available in this county. Um, as well as some of the enhancement work that we're trying to do with slow down in our town signs that have been posted through a lot of the municipalities. And the slow down for pedestrians campaign on behalf of the local traffic officers and what the county has done with getting a sign through DHDS that we've been rotating out throughout the county. The first one was here on New Street in New Brunswick. Uh, we're reminding folks you need to stop for the pedestrians that are about to enter a crosswalk. And I know for myself when I see those signs I'm much more alert, and that's 28 years in state police as if I need that reminder. And I know if that's a reminder for me, it's a reminder for most people when they see those signs. So having said that, uh, this is our website. It's mctrafficsafety.com. I think if you Google it, uh, we're about the 20th search in Google. And to get it higher than that, well, there's a cost associated with that. But when you hit Middlesex County Traffic Safety, it will come up, mctrafficsafety.com. Uh, the vision of this is to, when I say assimilate the three E's of traffic safety, it was offered to me by the freeholder, DHTS embraced it and said, you know what, we want to take a look at this website and perhaps model it for the other 21 counties in the state. So we have a great opportunity not just to educate the folks that come to the site, and like the freeholder said, 300 in January, but those that keep coming back and try to find additional information in terms of events that are going on in the towns, and what they can do to be a bit safer when they're driving, walking, or riding a bicycle throughout the county or anywhere in the state. We have three safety pages. and the menu bar on the top left, we start off with bicycle safety. We have pedestrian and driving. We'll take you quickly through bicycle safety. All the pages were designed with the mindset that if we could offer folks information on statistics, which is updated regularly, traffic safety tips for that particular safety mechanism, and downloadable brochures that are available through DHTS or through our offices. Uh, they have the ability to go on and download themselves to print them out. So all three pages are designed similarly. Uh, great information. Uh, DHTS, the areas that we use from the actual state site are cited on the site, but we plan on changing this every month or every other month. 
to keep the information fresh, keep people coming back. Once they've been there once, we don't want them to keep seeing the same thing when they come back to visit the site. So we have three. Perhaps the most extensive is the third site, uh, which is driving safety. And driving safety covers uh, a lot of the things that are dear to my heart, having four children and are driving right now. Uh, distracted driving. Um, I have three in college and one in high school, and I'm constantly talking about the cell phones. And I see their friends and how many of you drive down the street, and all you have to do is come to a stop sign or a traffic light, look behind you, in front of you, to your right and left, almost half the people are on phones. And it's the push with the federal government this year with distracted driving. It's the push with our own traffic safety officers within the county uh, to educate and if we have to enforce those laws um, to save lives. So the driving safety is perhaps the most in-depth page that we have in that it covers uh, operating under the influence of alcohol, distracted driving, and some of the other things associated with the mistakes that are causing accidents throughout the county. The fourth area up on the top is yet to be populated, but we'll go into it anyway. This is an area when I meet with the uh, municipal traffic officers monthly that we're soliciting their input in terms of, and I'll show you in a second how you get to their various web pages. Uh, but this area we hope to show the various bicycle rodeos, the uh, police open houses, uh, prom nights, whatever the municipalities have that are somewhat related to traffic safety, whether it's bicycle, pedestrian, drinking and driving. This will be the area that we engage the municipalities to populate their information. Traffic updates is a direct link to keep Middlesex moving. Uh, one of the uh, resources that are there that I know that I use is on the top left is an interactive map that gets updated hourly. And it gives you the road conditions throughout the county, and both in terms of normal traffic, where the traffic construction is taking place, and wherever there might be accidents where there are heavy delays. Uh, it's updated hourly. It's a great resource. The website itself, I don't mean to go through it tonight, but it is a tremendous resource for anybody who has not been on it to look about everything that we cover on our website, they cover, and maybe a little bit more until we get up and going. So that is the direct link to KMM. The area that we're somewhat proud of, uh, I don't know so, so much the municipalities, uh, but engaging the traffic officers, we thought there ought to be a place to be able to report a problem or report potholes. For anybody that wants to get to our site and say, you know, I was driving through, I'm not sure what town it was, but it was over by South River and there was an issue that I have a concern with. You have the ability uh, to go into a couple different places on our website and drill down on the municipality. Either you know the name of it and you're in the site that Carol's scrolling through now. It shows the point of contact for police, for traffic safety, if you have a road hazard concern or if there's just a pothole you want to report. Or you could scroll down to our map on the home page that shows Middlesex County, lists all the municipalities there, put the cursor on the area you think it is, and click, and it will take you to the missile scroll page. We have a home page plus six individual pages of information on our website. Um, report a pothole, report a problem. One goes to the Department of Transportation, State Department, if you want to follow through and see what the issues are on the state roads and how to contact people. So the last area is the link. The link is to our traffic safety um, partners. Uh, everyone's not on there yet, but for the ones that we have, uh, the folks that we interact uh, mostly right now, Turnpike Authority, uh, DOT, uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, Highway Transportation, and we need to get uh, perhaps KMM on here as well. And so we have a links page. Uh, we update the calendar. Uh, we hope to update it monthly, put upcoming information about it. The program and the website is completely funded. Um, the program is funded through DHTS. The website is funded through Keep Middlesex Moving, and the maintenance of it is funded through DHTS. So the program, again, the website and the program, DHTS is looking at as a model program to bring some of the other counties in the state. There are other initiatives with the program, and I don't mean to go into that at, at this meeting, that we hope to put on the website so everyone is aware of the resources that we bring to the table. Um, the last thing I would say is how do folks even know to get to the website? Um, one of the things that we just uh, were approved and was funded through the Department of Highway Traffic Safety is a brochure. And the brochure advertises the website, the programs we offer, and what CTSP, the Comprehensive Traffic Safety Program, does and what we're about. And I'll distribute that and you folks can take a look at your leisure. 
Dave, thank you very much. And um, as we go back to the home page, I think th that I just want to highlight the report a problem, report a pothole. Again, this is uh, one of the critical parts of this website is the ability for anyone to be able to go on there okay. uh, in any part of the county and be able to click on if you see a problem of any type. We know just through studies and through talking to law enforcement, if we're, if the county government, if the local municipalities can become aware of a traffic safety hazard or road hazard quickly enough, uh, sometimes we can avoid an accident or a problem occurring down the road. So this gives quick, easy access to anyone to be able to access uh, that type of information. Dave, great job on the presentation. Thank you very much for all of your efforts in pulling this together. And with that, I'd like to ask uh, Bill Neary, uh, Director, if I may just come up for a minute to sure. uh, say a word. They've been such uh, great partners. Um, about a round of applause for Bill Neary from KMN. Good evening. First of all, I want to thank the Board of Chosen Freeholders, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for the opportunity. It's only a few minutes uh, that I want to express my appreciation to the Board and to Dave Greger. <clears throat> I know uh, political discourse and uh, disagreements that are occurring throughout the nation makes it seem impossible for people to get together. But I have to tell you on a personal level, Dave Greger and I, <clears throat> I'm a diehard Mets fan. And he has the fallacy and the weakness of being a diehard Yankee fan. And we managed still how to work together. I'm not sure how that works. But I, I do want to thank David, David Greger, for giving me the opportunity to say a few words about the collaboration that us at KMM and the CTSP have had. The potential for life-saving value of our pedestrians, our bicycle riders and users, and the driving safety education is immeasurable to all the residents of, East, of, of Middlesex County. <clears throat> Yet, in a belt-tightening economy, these programs may not get the full attention that they deserve. So I must also thank the Board of Chosen Freeholders for recognizing the wisdom of our cooperative relationships. Because of a county government that welcomes shared services, KMM was able to partner with the CTSP in two ways. First, KMM leveraged its grant funding to help develop and launch CTSP's website. Second, with a mutual goal of mobility safety, KMM can support both CTSP and our municipal safety programs. Our staff can assist pedestrian and bicycle safety activities, safe routes to school implementation, and even the distracted driving programs. I know all of us look forward to an ongoing relationship that will enable us to continue to work together for the health and safety of all the Middlesex County residents. And I want to thank you for your continued support and the continued work to make Middlesex County the greatest county in the land. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. That's it, Director. Thank you very much. Thank you, Freeholder. Deputy Director Ron Rios. As far as my administration report, in the coming weeks, the staff at the Division of Archives and Records Management Center will be testing new software, which will be used at the Darm Center. One of the major enhancements will be our users' ability to submit their request to transfer or retrieve records electronically which has been a paper-based system to date. As far as Board of Elections, the rewarding of Middlesex County has been completed. The statewide voter registration system will be updated in time for the April school election. Voters are encouraged to check their sample ballots for possible changes in their voting district or polling place. Also, as a result of newly passed legislation, school districts may opt to move their April school election to the November general election. As of February 10th, of the 23 school districts in the county, 14 have voted to move their elections to November 6th, the general election. And uh, this is definitely a major cost saving effort for all the school districts that are going to be getting involved in that. As far as information and technology, <coughs> the Office of Information and Technology is recommending the implementation of electronic medical records at the Raritan Bay Mental Health Center. And the deployment of the new behavioral health care software applications will provide the center's clinical, administrative, and financial staff with the ability to de deliver state-of-the-art health care services in an efficient and cost-effective manner. The Office of Technology and Purchasing Office is developing the implementation of a state-of-the-art electronic purchase order and check distribution application designed to eliminate printing inefficiencies and reduce overall costs to the county government.
there's not necessarily a dollar amount that we can get to right now at this point, in which we, later in the year we will probably be able to get to that, the actual cost savings. But we will sa certainly save money on labor, postal costs, and paper costs, and continue progress in the administration department. That concludes my report. Thank Eric. you, Deputy Director. Free over Charlie Tamara. Thank you, Director. Um, Coming soon at Middlesex County College will be the Magic of Middlesex, Middlesex Scholarship Gala on September, th I'm sorry, March 3rd from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the College Center and the Middlesex <coughs> County College campus in Edison. The event will include a performance by illusionist David Garrity, food and drink, silent auction, and tributes to this year's corporate hon honoree, Wells Fargo, and individual honorees, uh, Professor Bellicans of Mil Milltown, who also will be receiving the Spirit of Middlesex Award, Joanne Philweber, who will be named Alumni of the Year. In addition, Middlesex alumnus Alex Percone, who is also known as the Car Man, will showcase his ability to create spectacular displays of stacked cars. One of the items in the silent auction will be to destroy his stacked cars. The money raised from this event will provide merit and non-base scholarships for, stu for students at the college. Ticket and more information may be available by calling 732-906-2564. From the Rutgers Cooperative Extension in Middlesex County, we'd like to invite you to be part of the Photographing of the Floral Ward, World workshop at, on Saturday, March 3rd, from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Earth Center, located at Davidson's Mill Road at 42 Reeve Avenue. And of course, after that, you can go to the Cala at Middlesex County College. The approximately two-hour lecture will be followed by an optional two-hour picture-taken hike until 6 p.m. Beginner, beginning fo photographers and experts are encouraged to, att to attend. Please bring your own cameras and dress appropriately for outdoors. The cost is $20 per person. Uh, also from the Rutgers Extension, um, they have received a $27,900 grant from the USDA for specialty crops. They also received a 10,000 grant for ARC tourism and marketing grant from USDA. Uh, the schools trained over 75 administrators this last week. They have trained 33 master gardeners in environmentally sound gardening techniques, and they're preparing for the New Jersey training of organic landscaper certification in cooperation with the New Jersey DEP. They've applied for a grant for regional marketing and farm products and requested $195,000 over five years. In the very near future, Congressman Rush, Rushholt is scheduled to uh, have a breakfast meeting with the farmers for a question and answer and provide training for the cooperative extension. That is uh, scheduled for March 19th. And for our 4-H'ers, uh, 23 4-H four four groups and three 4-H adult advisors will be attending the 2012 North Jersey 4-H conference to be held March 9th through 11th in Clinton Township. The conference provides opportunities for 4-H for teens to participate in war workshops focusing on life skills, healthy lifestyles, decision making, career exploration, and preparing for college. The New Brunswick 4-Hers and the 4-H Chess Club participated in a regional 4-H chess tournament held in Newark in February. The new 4-H club allows youth to expand their skills in chess and also provides practice for teamwork, cooperation, leadership, and community service. Also, the Middlesex County 4-H will be hosting a craft and vendor show at the 4-H Center in East Brunswick on Saturday, March 3rd. All proceeds will be to su support the 4-H programs and improvements to the 4-H Center. At the, New Bruns at the New Brunswick Center, the 4-H continues to grow to provide opportunities for, for traditionally un underserved youth to participate in 4-H program. The clubs include table tennis, basketball, environment, ballet, modern dance and arts and crafts, hip hop dance, soccer, Aztec dance, food and fitness, and teen leadership. And also, I had an opportunity this week to, vis to um, visit our workforce development and uh, had a, uh, a VIP tour with Jane Brady. And we, this county offers a lot of uh, opportunities for those people who are unemployed. So, and, and we are also doing next year for, uh, I mean next month, We'll be doing a program with Jane on that for uh, um, keep Mil uh, for Middlesex County, and also I know pitchers and catchers report next week, but we are still celebrating the Giants win. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Freeholder. Freeholder Blanquita Valente. Thank you, Freeholder Director. Uh, first of all, I want to invite the public 
to uh, any of the advisory council meetings of the Department of Aging and Disabled Services. We are celebrating uh, this year the 90th birthday bashes, and because there's such a huge numbers of people involved, we're going to have three this year. One at a, on April 26th at the Edison Senior Center, one on May 2nd at the Old Bridge Senior Center, and one on May 14th at the South Brunswick Senior Center. So you have been uh, informed and invited to attend. Um, <coughs> the Office of Human Services uh, wants a report on the point in time service of the homeless. Uh, this took place in late January and believe it or not, there were 1,100 surveys were completed by folks who are homeless. Raw numbers should be available soon, which will help us plan for services and housing opportunities as we move forward in the year 2012 and beyond. The Office of Human Services was recently notified that state funding for the differential response program unfortunately will end on June the 30th. But on the same call, a more positive message was the announcement of a plan to issue an RFB as a request for proposal to fund an additional family success center in Middlesex County. We have one already. There was also an indication that an additional $250,000 could be made available through the Human Services Advisory Council to re develop a prevention program request for proposals. The Human Services Advisory Council agreed to send a letter to the State Commissioner of Children and Families encouraging her to expedite this process. I know that many of you are aware of this, but uh, coming up very soon is Dr. Sue's <coughs> birthday, and again, a Read Across America uh, celebration will be taking place. We have, many of us have been invited already and these are the dates on Monday, February 27th, uh, Thursday, March the 1st, Friday, March the 2nd, and again, this is, um, if you're interested, you are to contact at Kim Schaefer um, at 732-339-9331, extension 3710. And also on Coming up on March 4th, there's a Grain of Wheat Foundation. Uh, this is a foundation in memory of William Joseph Kennedy and, of course, uh, sponsored by Bridget Stilwell Kennedy. If you are interested, please uh, reach out to, uh, to Bridget, who is our social <coughs> services uh, director in the Department of, uh, Department of Human Services, and that dinner is March the 4th, and it's sponsored by the Knights of Columbus Chapter 4 of the Metuchen Diocese, and um, the price is $50 per person, and a portion of that will go to the Grain of Wheat Foundation, which was a charity created to honor Bill's life by our own Bridget Silver Kennedy. <coughs> the invitation is open to all. Seating is limited, and the deadline is February 22nd, so we don't have much time. And uh, I have the location and the place that, where you can obtain the ticket. <coughs> Thank you very much, and I believe that's the end of my report. Thank you, Freeholder. Uh, two quick items. First of all, I want to commend Freeholder Polos and all those that are involved or were involved with the creation of the website. Just a terrific job. Um, I have an exciting announcement. Now, last year, all during uh, the year, and particularly during my director's message, the budget adoption, and the state of the county <coughs> address, um, I talked about the fact that Middlesex County has a triple-A bond rating. And what does that mean? It means that we're able to borrow money at a lower interest rate. It is the highest rating uh, that um, a, a government agency can, uh, uh, can get. It was uh, given to us by Standard & Poor's. It's actually a, high, a better bond rating than the United States of America and the state of New Jersey. And I'm pleased to announce that once again, we have received confirmation we will have a triple A bond rating right here in Middlesex County. There's only 67 counties in the country that have that bond rating. So that's <laughs> all. So that's, that's 
good news for the taxpayers. Thank you. Mr. Kelso, you're on. Any resolutions to be added? Uh, there are none. To be amended? None. To be held? There are none. To be voided? There are none. Wow. <laughs> At this point in time, I'd like to open up to the public on any resolution items. Any items on the, on the uh, agenda tonight? Motion to close. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Field Tamara. All those in favor of closing the public portion, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Any items to be removed from the consent agenda and voted on separately? I have uh, resolution 12-0293, 12-0311, 12-0360, and 12-0374. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay, Mr. Kelsey. I uh, guess, uh, Director, uh, in that event, uh, motion would be in order to adopt the consent agenda uh, consisting of resolution numbers 12-0273 through 12-0376, excluding numbers 12-0315 and 12-0376, which were previously voted upon, and resolutions 12-0293, 12-0311, 12-0360 and 12-0374 to be voted upon separately. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Fielder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Freeholder Polos. Yes. Freeholder Rios. Yes. Freeholder Tamaro. Yes. Freeholder Valente. Yes. Freeholder Director Afano. Yes. Uh, and at this point time, it would be appropriate to consider the four resolutions together, which were excluded by the Director. There are resolutions 12-0293, 12-0311, 12-0360, and 12-0374. Need a motion? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rio, seconded by Freeholder Valente. Roll call. Freeholder Barrett Valente? Yes. Freeholder Polos? Yes. Freeholder Rios? Yes. Freeholder Tamaro? Yes. Freeholder Valente? Yes. Freeholder Director Afano? Present, not voting. Okay, at this point in time, I'd like to open the meeting up to the public on any item. Anybody from the public want to comment on any item? Motion to close. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Any motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by Deputy Director Rios, seconded by Fielder Valente. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Meeting adjourned. <laughs>